Okay guys, now we are going to talk about the co-translational targeting of secretory proteins uh, oh, to the ER. It's a mouthful of name, but the actual uh, message uh, about this is shown here in this picture, short picture as you can see. Uh, now the protein is uh, been is been translated and the protein is translated uh, in the in the workbench of ribosome and ribosome are uh, sit on the endoplasmic reticulum and right after the protein synthesis is done, the protein has to be transported inside the endoplasmic lumen which is called the co-translational targeting of these proteins and most of the time the protein we are talking about are the secretory proteins that means we need to produce that protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and then we need to transfer that protein from ER to Golgi and via the ER Golgi pathway to finally uh, which will uh, finally fuse with the cell membrane and release those protein outside the cell okay so now let us look at that in, uh, in detail now all protein synthesis in eukaryotic begins in the cytosol where the ribosomal subunits come together and begin uh, the trans, uh, uh, translating an mRNA near its 5' prime end. Okay. Soon after the protein start to emerge from the ribosome it may become the directed uh, to the endoplasmic reticulum which is ER. It is targeted to ER if it is uh, ultimately uh, designated to incorporation into the ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosome or plasma membrane or if it is designated to of the secretion pathway. Okay. Oh. So as we can see in this picture everything is clear. Now in mammalian cell, most protein enter the ER uh, con co-translationally, co that means along with the translation process, these proteins have the amino acid sequences called the signal sequence, which is typically located at the amino, ter am amino acid terminal of the polypeptide chain signal. Now the signal sequence span about 20 amino acids, as you can see. Now if I go back again, let me uh, come here and tell you about the signal sequence first. Okay. Now the signal sequence span about 20 amino acid and includes a stretch of hydrophobic amino acids uh, presented by a basic amino acid sequence. Here is the stretches of hydrophobic amino acid and the presence of a basic amino acid. As the signal sequence emerges from the ribosome, it is recognized and bound by a signal recognition particle which is SRP consisting of six polypeptides and a small cytoplasmic RNA. Now the SRP binds to the ribosome as well as uh, the signal sequence and in so doing stalls the translation process. Now the SRP targets the entire complex to the rough endoplasmic reticulum by binding to an SRP receptor on the membrane of the ER which is denoted with blue. Now the GTP molecule binds with the SRP and the SRP receptor and the GTP bound target uh, the transfer of the signal sequence from the SRP to membrane channel uh, which is called the translocon. Now hydrolysis of GTP to GDP leads to the dissociation of the SRP from the both of the receptor and the ribosome mRNA complex and it will remain only the uh, protein. Now the transfer of ribosome mRNA complex to the translocon allows the signal sequence to interact with the short hydrophobic side chain uh, located in the narrow neck of the translocon channel. Now this interaction uh, opens the ch translocon by moving the plug away from the translocon channel. A translocation proceeds in, in signal sequence is cleaved by the signal peptides and the polypeptide is released into the lumen of ER. Thus the process of protein synthesis directly drives the transfer of growing polypeptide chains through the translocation into the ER. So that's how the translocation of uh, the protein which is previously been translated uh, uh, onto uh, the ER is being carried out and can be translocated from the external portion of the ER into the lumen of the ER. Okay, so that's how uh, the protein synthesis and co-translational synthesis is done and I hope that's going to help you. Thank you.